Hi, thank you for joining us as we discuss the questions, stigmas, and benefits of counseling. My name is Dr. Ryan Burkhart. I am the program director of the Master of Arts in Clinical Mental Health Counseling program at CCU. I'm joined today uh, by Dr. Trent Langhofer, who is the clinical director of the CCU Counseling Center in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Trent, thanks for sitting down with me today as we really talk about the benefits of mental health. You know, we are kind of in the thralls of just cold weather right now, and we know that we actually see some correlation at times between the seasons and mental health. As we enter into, let's say, the winter season, we typically see people seek out mental health services for things like depression at times. Um, so, you know, as, as we're seeing that happen, and, and you know, I may be a little biased in this, but I got to ask you, does this stuff actually work? Does counseling actually help people? What do we need to know about mental health? Yeah, um, Ryan, I think a lot of people when they're considering counseling really wonder, does this actually work? And, and people talk to other people when they're struggling with something often. Uh, and so I think people wonder, is this going to feel like talking to a friend because that didn't work or talking to a family member because that didn't work. And, and I want our audience to know counseling absolutely works. Study after study demonstrates that counseling works. And, and I would say that the right counseling delivered by the right counselor at the right time is maybe one of the best interventions in mental health uh, that people can seek after. And, and I think underlying that is the reality that, that words have power. You know, the, the right words spoken at the right time in the right situation really can change my emotional well-being. Think about this. What, what about the word benign if I'm in an oncologist's office, right? Or, or the word guilty if I'm on the stand in a court of law, those, those yeah. words in the, in the right situation really change my emotional state of being. How about the words, I forgive you, if it's a loved one that I've offended yeah. at some point? I mean, that's well, just and, a, and, and we see, I mean, some of the studies that we've seen, I mean, it, it's, it's actually quite incredible. You know, we, we have some studies that actually show that, that there are changes in neuronal pathways in the brain that actually result from from clinical mental health counseling, from going and sitting across from a professional counselor. That is, that's incredible. I mean, our brain's ability to constantly be reacting and adapting to our environment. And, and even the idea that, that there's power in words, you know, those of us who have went through, let's say some really serious trauma and, you know, even counselors have went through a lot of serious trauma. We obviously see clients, you know, one of the things that we know, you know, along those lines of the brain, there's, there's an area of your brain called Baroka's area. And Broca's area, it, it's largely involved with the spoken word. And what we've seen when we've had people kind of hooked up to fMRI machines is when they begin to talk about their trauma, the Broca's area almost goes offline in the brain. It's almost like the brain doesn't even want to hear those words spoken and, and basically shuts itself down. It's, and, it's and, yeah, sorry, sorry, go ahead, Trent, but just the power, no, well, of, words, I, the power of words. But, but, but the words we speak can ch change our brain neuropathways yep. and, and yep. change our brain's chemistry. And, and we know so much more about that now than we ever have. But, but today we've got the science that backs up what counselors have believed for decades sure, sure. has been yep. true. So, yeah. Yep. Um, so let's say, Trent, so let's say we've got a client, right, who, who actually chooses to, to actually come in and sit down across from me, right, and we begin engaging, like, in this process that we know works, we know changes neuronal pathways. You know, how, what, how much responsibility is there for a change, let's say, on the counselor or on, on the client? Where does that fix, quote, unquote, come from? Yeah, yeah. Uh, great question, Ryan. So I, we're both counselors. Uh, contrary maybe to popular belief, we're both terminally human, meaning we're flawed. We got our own issues. We've worked through our own stuff. Uh, we're not that different, as it turns out, from the clients that we have served over the years. And so, so I, I say that to first just say uh, clients shouldn't feel embarrassed about sharing their struggles with the counselor. The counselor's probably experienced it personally or heard it before. I feel like at this point, I don't know about you, I've heard just about everything there is to hear. Yeah, but in fact, you know, you know, a, a lot of counselors actually go into counseling because 
they've had their own stuff and they were helped by a counselor. So they went through counseling themselves and they just want to help people the same way. So it was their own counseling for their own stuff that led them sitting across from the client. Yeah, and that's definitely true in my case. What, what has also been true in my case is the counselors I have gone to have put the responsibility on me uh, to do the changing, right? So uh, counselors have not fixed me, but they have walked alongside me to help me fix myself. And that's really the answer to the question you asked. Uh, counselors, it's not a counselor's role to change a client, but to facilitate change in a client by empowering the client and e equipping the client with the, the skills or, or means of coping or insight that, that would allow the client, uh, in a sense, to, to change themselves, uh, so to speak. So I, think, I yeah. think some people walking into a counselor's office are going, all right, here's the problem, now you fix it. And counselors are like, hey, not so fast. Uh, I'll equip you to fix it, uh, but I can't fix, I can't fix or change you. Yeah, and, and I've seen that before, even with the kids. You know, a lot of my clinical background was the adolescents. Um, I've I've had parents come in before, and almost like throw their kid at me and say, "I just need you to fix my kid." <laughs> so, but but you're right. It is it is this collaborative kind of journey together between the counselor and the client, and and you know, Trent, as as that process as that collaborative process is occurring, where the the counselor is facilitating change. But there is skin in the game for, for the client to be creating and manifesting change in themselves as well. You know, what, what, should, what should people be expecting? I mean, should they, I'm going to be in counseling for a year. I'm going to be in counseling for, for just three sessions. I mean, what have you seen in terms of the length of time to create that type of change in a client? Yeah, yeah. When clients come to a counselor's office, and, and you know this too, right, they're, they're usually in pain and they're really ready for some pain relief. Like, I'm ready for some change now. Uh, counseling is, isn't a quick fix. Yeah. Um, it, it, and we live in the age of a quick fix, right? I can remember dialing on to AOL for the first time. Yep. And it was like 20 minutes to get online. And it was the coolest 20 minutes of my <laughs> uh, adolescence, right? So uh, it was awesome. Now, if I can't pull up a website in less than five seconds, we have a problem. I'm super frustrated. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, fast food, uh, DoorDash delivery, like everything's at the uh, tip of our fingers, literally. So I think we're conditioned to expect things to happen quickly and, and counseling doesn't happen quickly. I think as a rule, it takes a handful of sessions or more, probably 10 to 15 uh, for clients to feel like I'm over the hump or, or the edge has been taken off the pain that I feel or I'm handling this situation a little bit better. So to me, probably 10 to 15 sessions feels maybe like uh, uh, the beginning of an adequate amount of, of time to help a client change. And, and there are some issues that do take a lot longer. Um, I, I, I've worked with clients for years, plural, on shaping parts of their personality or really working through deep trauma or maintaining recovery over a long period of time. It's not, it's not a quick fix, but for clients who, who put some skin in the game and really get invested in their own health, if they're, if they're willing to trust the process and do the work, uh, Ryan, the, 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 the work will get done. It will take a little bit of time, uh, but the time invested will be time well spent. Yeah. And, and, you know, Trent, to take us back to that, to one of the very first statements that you made, it really is about the right counselor at the right time. And I think, you know, what we would say to people is, if now is the right time for you, start looking for that right counselor. And that may take, and we, we talked about this in another, you know, another kind of recording, where it may take a couple tries to find that right counselor. But just understand that's normal. Find the right person for you find the right person who feels safe and feels like someone that you can confide in in sessions and just choose to commit to the process. If, if that is something you're interested in, Dr. Langhofer and his interns are actually offering mental health services through uh, the, the CCU Counseling Center in Colorado Springs, especially if you live in Colorado. Uh, but at the same time, if you're interested in being that person, if you're interested in being that person who's partnering with others, who's hearing other people's stories, who's choosing to sit with them, 
I also recommend you check out the Master of Arts in Clinical Mental Health Counseling program at CCU. Um, we have a solid program and it's all about producing people who are willing to sit across from others and hear their stories and be a part of their journey. Dr. Lang Hoffer, thank you so much as we kind of continue this conversation about what mental health is, what counseling is, and the benefits of it. Till next time, brother. Thanks, Ryan.